This is from the first chapter to give you a sense of what these women are like, especially in terms of what their childhood has been like. The fire subsides in the grate, the last coals jostle, ashes flake down. Anna's pain shakes the walls of Sarum House at night and brings Beatrice's reprobate soul to heal. Um, Anna, who is suffering from the loss of the woman who was her stepmother, but also her sexual partner and her beloved woman, uh, but also struggling in this sense of where is my life going to go? What can I do? Um, how can I continue to cling to my um, childhood beliefs? She climbs into bed with Anna in the early hours. It's as homely and familiar as when they were youngsters dreaming one another's dreams, embroidering the dreams with Anna's stories in the morning. Anna wrote them down in tiny books fashioned from wallpaper scraps and flower bags. She sketched the characters they imagined, matchstick people, running amok up and down the margins. But Anna did not write down the tales correctly, Beatrice felt. The matchstick folk would keep rebelling against their stories. They were never set to write in a wholesome way at the end of their adventures, for the writer was nearly as unruly and anarchic as they were. They changed gender and acted inconsistently. In their lawless realm, the wicked went unpunished, the good unrewarded. Beatrice was bitterly critical. She preferred order. Anna said it was not her fault. The daredevil people did what they liked and she couldn't control them. Anna also kept a secret collection of papers sewn together and labelled in her minute writing Tump Book. What's a tump? Beatrice asked. It's a little world, Anna said, smirking. My little world. Where is it then? Somewhere else, was all Anna would say. Beatrice pried into the mirror-written tump book a few times, deciphering it in the looking glass. Very silly stuff and rather nasty. Insects eating each other. Flowers throttling other flowers. None of the creatures or plants did or said anything quaint. In the twinkling of an eye, the feuding, loving lasses have become 26 and 28. Both parents are in the earth, the mother long ago, papa only last year. I feel as if God were dead, Anna confided, her face ashen. I can't feel him there anymore, at all. Papa seemed immortal, we all came and went, but he was a rock. Papa was mild and tender, although his God was so harsh. Beatrice endlessly corrects Anna. There is sense, of course there is, but we can't discern it yet. Jocelyn, the elder brother, does his best but cannot do for the young women what Papa did, stretch eagle wings over them and hold off heaven and hell. He was a roof against rain and whatever else up there waits to fall on them. God Almighty's inscrutable justice lowering down. Beatrice, the heir, must take his place, hold out both arms, act father and mother, and now Anna threatens to die.